This presentation looks at writing detailed electronic configurations for atoms. By the end of the presentation, you ought to be able to write the full electronic configuration for the elements from hydrogen through to krypton in terms of S, P and D subshells. You ought to know how the periodic table can help with this. And you also ought to be able to write abbreviated configurations using noble gas symbols. OK, so our next skill will be to actually look at how you arrange the electrons for any given element uh, between the shells and subshells. To do this, we're going to look in detail at the elements up to krypton in the periodic table. So from hydrogen up to krypton, you need to specify very clearly for the electrons their arrangement in shells and subshells. And to do that, we'll follow this order of filling, moving left to right. So... Uh, fairly logically, we start with the first shell, and we said that only has an S subshell. So we first of all put electrons into the 1S subshell. So that's the S subshell of the first shell. Moving on to the right, we then get to shell 2. And remember, we said that has an S and a P subshell. And we fill them in that order. So first the 2S, that's slightly lower in energy, and so it fills first. S subshells always hold 2, so that will take up to 2. Then we'll move on to the 2p, so that's the p subshell of the second shell. And p subshells always hold up to 6, so we can put up to 6 in that. If we fill that, we'll move on to the third shell. And again, we follow this same order, so first the s subshell of the third shell, then the p, but at that point, we don't go straight on to the 3d. So remember, the third shell has s, p, and d, but we don't go straight on and finish filling the third shell. So we do the S and the P for the third shell. At that point, we leave the third shell, and we start on the fourth shell. But all we do is we fill the S subshell of the fourth shell, and then we go back and complete the third shell with its D subshell. And then at that point, when we've put up to the ten electrons possible in the 3D subshell, we can then carry on and put electrons into the P subshell of the fourth shell, so the 4p subshell. The reason for this oddity is that the 4s subshell is actually slightly lower in energy than the 3d subshell, and things always go into the lowest possible energy state. So just pause and have a look at that sequence and try and get it uh, to some sort of degree of sense in your head. OK, so we'll put this into practice now. We'll pick an element, and we'll pick sulphur. Sulphur's got 16 electrons, so we need to arrange these 16 electrons in the relevant shells and subshells. And so I'll work through this one quite slowly, first of all, uh, so that you can see what's going on. Also, you can see the convention for how this is written. First of all, we fill the 1s subshell. Now, we said that can hold two electrons, so two of our 16 electrons will go into it. And the way we write that, have a look at what's written here carefully. You'll see, first of all, there's a number, and that says what shell we're in. So the number shell 1. Then there's the lowercase letter, must be lowercase, to say which subshell of that shell we're dealing with. So lowercase s. And then, finally, we have a superscript number to say how many electrons are going into that subshell. So 1, lowercase s, superscript 2 means we have put two electrons into the S subshell of shell 1. OK, so that's filled the first shell. It only has an S subshell. We'll move on to the second shell, and first of all we fill the S subshell. S subshells always hold two electrons, and so we put two in there. So we've now placed four electrons. Sulfur has 16. That leaves 12. More to place. What's next? Next is the P subshell of shell 2. And P subshells always hold up to 6 electrons. We said we had 12 left to place, so we can completely fill that 2P subshell. 6 electrons go into it. So we've now placed 2, 4, 10 electrons. We've got a further 6 to place. Well, what comes after 2P? We move on to the third shell, and it's S subshell, the 3S. S subshells can always hold 2 electrons, and so we're going to put 2 in there and write 3s 
2. So we've now placed 2, 4, 10, 12 electrons, just 4 left. What comes next? The 3p subshell. And of course, p's can hold up to 6, so all of our remaining 4 can go into the 3p, and that's sulphur completed. So let's look at another example, make sure that we're getting to grips with this, and we'll think about nickel uh, with 28 electrons. Considerably more than the sulphur, but still within the range that we need to be able to do up to krypton. Um, and what I suggest you do, if you're starting to think, well, maybe I can do this, pause the video and see if you can write this one out for yourself. Do use the sequence shown at the top. OK, uh, we should have written 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, then moved on to the fourth shell, 4s2, gone back to the third shell with its D subshell, and eight electrons complete nickel. The D could hold up to ten, so that's still filling at that point. Another example for you, selenium with 34 electrons. Again, I'd encourage you, pause the video, and see if you can write this one out yourself. And we'll get 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, onto the fourth shell, 3, 4s2, back to the third shell, completely fill the 3d with 10 electrons, and then back again to the fourth shell, now with its p subshell. The remaining four electrons for selenium fit in there, and that's done. By this point, you might be starting to feel a bit overwhelmed. We've got shells, we've got subshells, we've got orbitals, we've got number of electrons in different subshells, we've got different subshells in different shells, and ah, how on earth am I going to remember all this? Well, there's some very good news for you. Uh, the periodic table actually maps this out in a remarkable way. So, here's the periodic table as we're used to seeing it. Uh, now, um, if you look at this, it's been coloured... Um, to pick out different sort of bits of the periodic table. And we call those different blocks of the periodic table. If we shifted helium back over to be with the other blues, uh, so like I've drawn the arrow there, uh, the blue two columns on the left we can call the S block, and that letter relates to the S subshell. We'll see that what, how in a moment. Uh, the orangey browny colour in the middle, we call the D block, and that relates to the D subshell. The green on the right we'll call the P block, and that relates to the P subshell. And the F down the bottom, though you'll never really make use of that, relates to the F subshell. So how do we actually make use of this? Well, if I pick out an element, I've circled germanium GE here. Um, you can think of its electronic configuration by kind of working your way across the periods of the periodic table and using the letters of the blocks and the number of elements in each one to remind you. So if we start at the top left corner of the periodic table we have hydrogen in the S block of the first period which relates to the 1S subshell. So hydrogen and helium fill 1S1 and 1S2 and then we move down to the second period with lithium. So we're now starting the second shell. We're, f we're in the S block to start with, which means we're filling the S subshell. So lithium and beryllium fill 2S1, 2S2. And then moving across to the right, we get to the P block of the second period, which means the 2P subshell. So moving from boron across to neon, we fill 2P1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 by the time we get to neon. And then we move on down to the third period, which means moving to the third shell. We start off in the S block, so that's like the 3S uh, subshell. Sodium, magnesium, 3S1, 3S2. Move across to aluminium, where are we? We're in the P block of the third period, so that's the 3P subshell. Aluminium across to argon, fill 3P1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So by the time we've got to argon, we've filled 1S2, 2S2, 2P6. 3s2, 3p6, and then we're moving on to the fourth shell. So potassium and calcium are in the S block of the fourth shell, so that's the 4s subshell. Uh, so 4s1, 4s2 by the time we get to calcium. Now, the only tricky thing here we need to remember that this D block as we start to enter it 
in a way doesn't belong to the period it's in. So although scandium, SC, is in the D block of the fourth period, it's actually the 3D subshell. So moving from scandium across to zinc, Zn, we're filling 3D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, by the time we get to zinc. And then as we move into the green, we're returning to the fourth shell. With It's the P block, so it's the 4P subshell. So gallium would be 4P1, germanium 4P2. So hopefully that use of the periodic table has restored a bit of joy to your life. Well, unfortunately, now I've got to depress you uh, by telling you that this wonderful system actually has two exceptions that you need to know in our elements from hydrogen through to krypton. So let's look at those and see what's different about them from what you'd expect. The first one is chromium, uh, CR. You'll find that in the top row of the D block. Um, and it has 24 electrons. Um, pause the video. What would you expect, using the normal shell and subshell filling that we've been using, what would you expect chromium to have for its electronic configuration? Well, hopefully, you came up with the following. So we have filled the whole of the first shell, the whole of the second shell. We did the 3S, the 3P thing. We went on to the 4S, put 2 in it, and then back to the 3D, and the final 4 went in there. Well, unfortunately, that final bit is not what actually happens. And you're just going to have to memorize this for chromium, um, that there's something different. So what actually happens uh, is the following. And what you see is, instead of the expected 2 in the 4S, uh, there's only 1, and then we put 5 in the 3D instead. So in other words, the 4S has 1 less than anticipated, and the 3D has 1 more than anticipated. Now in the A2 year, you look at that a bit more, uh, we can say that this is actually more stable in energy terms to have a half full D subshell, but you don't really need to go into that at AS. I said there was two exceptions, so what's the other one? The other one is copper with 29 electrons. So once again, I'd like you just to practice your electronic configurations by pausing and working out what we would expect this under the normal system to be. And hopefully you came up with this. So again, very similar, um, and we'll have 4S2, 3D9 at the end. Maybe you can guess what's going to go on here. Um, it's the end that's wrong again, and we actually have this. And this time, we've kind of stolen one of the 4S electrons. Instead of having a half full 3D, to have a full 3D. So instead of 4S2, 3D9, we've only got 4S1, and we're using that extra electron to complete the 3D subshell. Again, this is particularly stable. So you've got this far. You obviously survived the emotional torment of those two exceptions that you have to memorize. Sorry about that. To reward you, here's a bonus, a cunning plan to make things a little bit easier again. The way it makes it easier is to save you a bit of writing with the elements that have lots of electrons. It can get very boring, all that 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 business and so on. Um, so this will give you a slightly abbreviated way of writing out the electronic configuration. To do it, it uses the periodic table. I've just shown the top half of the periodic table here uh, with the elements up to krypton, the ones that you need to be able to do in detail. And we'll look at an example to show how this works. I'll pick out vanadium as an example. You can see it there in the fourth period. I've circled it in yellow. 23 electrons. Uh, and why don't you, if you feel the need for practice, just figure out what the full electronic configuration for vanadium would look like. And you should come up with this. There's a whole lot of writing. How can we make this shorter? Well, we make use of the noble gases, group 8, there on the right-hand side of the periodic table. And what we do, we say, well, vanadium is in period 4. What's at the end of the previous period? Well, it's argon. Circled it there in green. So argon would have the electronic configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6. And so we'll use it to replace all of that and just write what comes beyond that to get up to vanadium. And so what we end up with is this, AR for argon, and then just 4s2, 3d3. So all we've written is the bit of the electronic configuration that comes beyond 
the electronic configuration for argon. And so we can do this uh, for any of the elements there. Uh, have a practice. What about silicon? Pause the video at this point. What would be this abbreviated form of the electronic configuration for silicon? And it's this. So silicon's in period 3. At the end of period 2 is neon. So we can use neon to represent the 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 and just give the bit of the silicon configuration that comes beyond that, 3s2 and then 3p2.